So what's going on guys, and in this video I'm going to be breaking down the end cutscene for the easter egg in Der Eisendrack. The ending had a few different conclusions to things that we didn't really know about for a while, but it also opens a brand new can of worms for our characters in Black Ops 3 Zombies, and I can't wait to see how this pans out with DLC. But in this I'm going to be focusing specifically on the actual easter egg ending itself and the story leading up to this ending. I won't predict on what could happen next, I'll save that for future videos, but let's jump straight into it. Now to explain the story up to the easter egg ending itself, we need to track back in time all the way to Black Ops 1 Zombies to explain properly why we have the original version of our characters in cryogenic chambers. Now we can see on Dot Eisendrack in the projector room, we can see a bunch of pictures of the story developing during Black Ops 1 Zombies. In particular, we see a shot of all of our characters in cryogenic chambers. Now I'm pretty sure at this point, this is where Richtofen was holding these test subjects at the Siberia base which was the Call of the Dead map. And there were four test subjects in total, three of them were our characters and one was a Mexican test subject who we've never known the identity of until this map who was called Pablo Marinas who did indeed die. Now looking at the other three test subjects which are Dempsey, Takio and Nikolai there isn't really any explanation of when exactly Richtofen retrieved the remaining subjects and began his mission to extract Sam from the MPD. We don't know what exactly happened between this point in time and when they fought together at Shinonuma. Now at this point the older version of our characters don't recall why they hate Richtofen, they're not sure why they hate him but they know they hate him for some reason. And then when they go to Call of the Dead, Richtofen deliberately returns to the Siberia base where we have to start collecting collecting the artifacts in order to begin the mission of extracting Sam from the MPD and when the others are trapped inside a vault he says that he's glad that the other characters can see nothing that might spark their memories of being held there. Now it's at this point that Richtofen convinces the actors on Call of the Dead to actually carry out a process of sending secret messages to make a Soviet submarine appear which is holding the golden rod. This is the very first time we see the golden rod and it does make an appearance in Der Eisendrack, which I'll try and explain a little bit later into the video. So our original three characters at some point were all test subjects until Shino Numa, where we begin the process of Richtofen gaining all of these artifacts to extract Sam from the MPD to gain total power. But now we jump to Black Ops 3, where the Origins characters arrive at the Giant to interrogate the older Dr. Richtofen and try and persuade him to not open the teleporter, as this older version of Richtofen won't be able to comprehend the great evil that he could unleash. Now these three characters wanted the older Richtofen to awaken the test subjects, which is a bad thing because awaking these test subjects is actually what causes the events of Black Ops 1 to take place. So in order to prevent this, the Origins Richtofen comes out of the giant teleporter and kills himself, destroying the chances of finding out where the test subjects were held. Now it's at this point once Richtofen kills his older self, he actually kneels down on his body and before we weren't quite sure what exactly he's doing, but in this end cutscene we now know that the summoning key was actually used here. Richtofen explains that the summoning key can be used to extract the soul from from anybody, but it has to be at the very point of death. Now it's at this point that I don't quite understand how they learn of the transportation of the Dempsey test subject from Siberia, which is Call of the Dead, to Austria in Der Eisendrack. Because if you think about it, in the original story, Richtofen went back to the Siberia base to awaken the test subjects, but because this older Richtofen was dead, there was no point in time where Richtofen ever could have done that. And because of this change in history and Richtofen never actually returning to awaken the test subjects, probably as a precautionary measure, the test subjects were loaded into trucks and as seen in the beginning cutscene for the Eisendrack, shipped off to different locations with Dempsey's being at Griffin Castle or Eagle's Nest, whatever you prefer to call it. Now it seems from the giant, the characters actually built a full-fledged robot which they then tried to chase the trucks with, but suddenly the truck manages to take out one of the robot's arms, which makes the characters have to take their lift 
up towards the Eisendrak, which is where we see and take place when we spawn in the game, and we see Dempsey on board a rocket bound for the moon and Griffin Station. Now, the important fact is that Dempsey never actually gets to the moon. He is bound for it, but later when his capsule comes flying back down to Earth, we find that since Richtofen was already dead before, the arrangements to go back to the Siberia base and set up with that submarine to keep the Golden Rod for another time never happened. So instead, the Golden Rod was attempted to be sent with Dempsey to the rocket at Griffin Station. This was probably done to help continue the research of the MPD, but it seems that this Dempsey test subject was going to be used as a test subject to put inside the MPD, which probably explains why when it comes crashing down in the courtyard, there is the Golden Rod just lying next to the rocket. Now with the power of the Golden Rod, we actually use it to spawn a gatekeeper who actually needs the souls from certain bows in order to become a physical being who transports through time and space without the aid of a teleporter and goes to Griffin Station and teleports the MPD from Moon itself back down onto the Eisendrak. Now fast forwarding to the end of the easter egg where you place the summoning key in the computers you activate a sequence of rockets which fire towards the moon and completely destroy it. Now with the moon easter egg we only had about three rockets fired to earth which did not completely destroy it. This is entirely different. This was around about 15 to 20 rockets fired at the moon which has completely destroyed it. There is no moon. There is no chance in hell of the moon ever returning and I'm pretty sure that rules out a moon DLC remake as well. Dr. Groff is 100% fully dead now and has no way to continue research on the MPD to use it for any other sort of malicious reason. Now the interesting thing is we don't know what's happened to the MPD because it's teleported onto the Eisendrak and then after the end cutscene it's not there anymore. So we're not sure where exactly it is. But looking aside from the MPD, we have the final cutscene and now let's talk about that. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, we now learn that Richtofen actually extracted the soul from the older Richtofen in the giant because this is exactly what he's going to do with this test subject of the older Dempsey. Now it's at this rate that we also learn that the summoning key possesses other powers. It can also be used to make people frozen in midair. This is something quite weird that we didn't know could be done before, but Richtofen takes control of all three of the other characters by actually making them stationary floating in midair and actually cannot move unless Richtofen deactivates this sort of weird feature. To me we're really starting to see some old traits of Richtofen coming into full swing here with that sort of maneuver on the characters but it's at this point where Richtofen shows a little bit of remorse by letting Dempsey be the one that actually says goodbye to his older self. Dempsey says if there's anyone that's got to do it it's got to be him. Normally Richtofen would never allow this but it's at this point that he actually lets him go and allows Dempsey a few final moments with his other self before Richtofen does the deed and that is by extracting the soul of the other Dempsey which has to be done straight after death. Now we aren't quite sure why Richtofen is doing this I'm sure as we get through the DLC there's going to be a much bigger picture but it seems like we're going to be doing this for all three of the other characters and a very simple approach to this is that if Richtofen collects the souls and kills off the other versions of our characters there's no way that the events from Black Ops 1 zombies can take place. So now with the moon blown up and Dr. Groff dead that's also wiped out the last remnants of group 935 on the moon. Now there are definitely other places that group 935 are resonating and we can confirm that due to ciphers around the map which could explain where exactly we could be going and possibly going to those areas to blow them up and also to destroy the the test subjects remaining that are Takio and Nikolai. But I feel that would be way too easy of a route to go down. This is Triarch we're talking about. There's got to be some sort of wicked twist in this to complicate this or somehow make this slightly less simple than it appears to be. Let me know what you guys think of this all down below in the comment section. I absolutely love theorizing the Black Ops Zombie storyline. It's something that I've loved for years and with this map Triarch have absolutely smashed it out of the park in terms of storyline for like getting those old nostalgic feels of Moon and tying up some of those stories but also introducing brand new plot twists which we were not expecting. So it seems like we're going down the route of finding our other two test subjects. I feel it definitely won't be as simple as that though. But let me know if you enjoyed and found this easter egg ending explanation video useful and insightful. If you did feel free to drop a like rating on it. I'd really appreciate that. It helps support my channel and the content I produce. And if you want to see more videos like this make sure to subscribe to my channel. But thank you.
you for watching, and I'll catch you on another one soon.